Hello, I'm Ram Kodyal Bell, storage engineer, NetApp IT. I'm here to give a short presentation on creating S3 as a service using Storage Grid and Ansible or Ansible Tower. We'll go over the why, what, a live demo, and then look at the details. But first, let's get the legal bit out of the way. Let's assume that everything you see in this presentation is confidential and may not be disclosed without the written permission of NetApp. Now, what was the need for this service? The requirement came from Cloud One, our internal homegrown hybrid cloud service and DevOps platform. Internal users can shop for services and deploy on-prem or on the public cloud. We wanted to offer S3 service on our private cloud. If you want to know more about Cloud One, we have a couple of sessions covering some of the services and I have them listed at the end of this slide deck or you can find more information on netappit.com. On this slide, I have a stripped down to the core automation framework of Cloud One relevant to this presentation. The self-service portal, catalog, and CMDB are on ServiceNow, Ansible Tower for orchestration with the modules and playbooks on Azure repos. We decided to keep it simple with minimum input from the user. Just the application code and password for the account. The bucket name will be generated based on the app code and RITM that you see here is the ServiceNow request item number. Automation must create the group, policies, user account, the bucket, S3 keys and notify the requester directly via email. We know from our automation effort had to be built around Ansible. There were no modules available for Storage Grid user and group management. Storage Grid supports S3 REST API, so we could use S3 compatible modules if any. The only one we could use was S3 bucket module. We could develop a solution using Ansible modules such as URI but the resulting playbooks will be complex. So we decided to write our own modules. Now, let's do a live demo. I have here I have here a brand new tenant created for this demo. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me log in here and do a quick walkthrough for you. Show you the amount of work involved if you were to provision resources manually. So you'd have to create the group and the policies, create the users, and um, generate the credentials, finally creating the buckets. Notice it's all empty here. Now let's go to postman and I'll fire a API call takes a few minutes so as I talk through it few seconds sorry as I talk through it you'll get a auto email from the, once the job is completed so as this, as mentioned earlier we're taking uh, minimal input from the user just the app code which is from service now and the user password and there you see there's a email generated with the keys attached it's encrypted using the password provided by the user and the gateway details have been or the endpoint details have been provided and going back to our deck Ouch. All right. Now the interesting part, how? We've developed some modules using Ansible fetch URL for user group and policy management and S3 key generation. For bucket create and delete, we use the S3 bucket module from the Ansible collections. Here are the four modules that we've developed. 
and the fifth one as i mentioned is s3 bucket it's directly from the ansible 2.9 dev branch the uh, the um, s3 bucket from the previous version of ansible could not be used because we were we have not implemented chargeback on storage grid so uh, since um, storage grid supports s3 rest api we could as i mentioned earlier in the presentation you can use uh, any generic um, module that supports s3 okay now let's take a look at each one of the modules so tenant account management um, this module although we did develop it we decided not to use it because uh, we figured we might as well use a single tenant for uh, Cloud One S3 service. Uh, but using this module, we have the ability to provision tenants across our grids if need be. Okay, so uh, there's the standard input variables that are required, some of which are optional. And the output will be um, set based on the uh, request made. Moving on to the next one, uh, this module uh, for user management is pretty much doing most of the work uh, behind the scenes here. Uh, it creates the, even though it says user module, it creates the groups, the policies, um, along with the user uh, and the S3 keys, okay, and uh, returns the output back to the requester okay the bucket create delete uh, we've um, used the s3 bucket without any modification except for the file name change so you can if you want you can use the same module to change the bucket policies too provided uh, your group policy permits the action Okay, the bucket usage, this was created because we wanted to fetch the uh, bucket creation timestamp. It was required for our automation workflow to confirm that the task uh, has been completed and to maintain it uh, for future service records. Okay. This is a, a view of our Ansible Tower job report details. Notice the job completes in under 15 seconds, usually around 13 seconds or so. Uh, if you were to manually provision the group policies, users, keys, and the bucket, it would take you a good 15 minutes or more. Uh, looking at looking up the naming standards, validating app codes, and all that. Okay. And this slide should give you a clear view of the entire workflow down to the playbook task. The um, user makes a request on the ServiceNow portal uh, and ServiceNow portal, once it validates the app code, um, gets the user password from the user and it makes a um, API call um, to Ansible Tower, which, uh, get, which pulls the entry playbook um, and sets the state to not ready Finally, uh, in the back end, it calls the main pl uh, playbook, which does uh, the user creation, bucket creation, and then um, sending the email back to the user. Okay, and uh, as it runs through each of the plays, it also floats the current status back to the uh, back to the service now object. So it's it changes from not ready to running and uh, finally setting it to OK on completion or on failure, it sets an error and sends an email notification back to the support team. Okay, um, and I have uh, the C three modules that are used by the playbook. So this should give you a pretty good idea of what goes on behind the scenes. Okay, now the best part. You don't have to sit down and develop your own modules or even playbooks for that matter. Our product team has released official Ansible modules for Storage Grid. You can do everything that I talked about and much more. 
Besides the tenant group and user management, there are modules to manage keys, DNS, NTP, and grid regions. There are also sample playbooks and articles available on NetApp.io. Everything related to automation involving storage grid, on tap, element OS, you can also find ton of, tons of articles and sample code. Wrapping up uh, the key takeaways. Build S3 as a service using storage with REST API and Ansible modules. You've seen how to do that. Based on what we've shared in this presentation, you should have a pretty good idea on ways to automate resource provisioning such as users and buckets. Also, where to find all the information related to Ansible modules for NetApp Storage Grid, including ONTAP and more. Remember, netapp.io. Okay. We have several sessions related to Storage Grid you might want to check out listed on this slide. And there are these are all pre-recorded sessions. And so if you have any questions related to this presentation, or if you want to discuss about automation around other NetApp products, you can meet with our NetApp IT engineers and architects on November 5th, 10 a.m. EST. Uh, register at netappit.com. Also, you have several sessions from NetApp IT staff, such as myself. Uh, you will hopefully find them interesting. Cloud One specific topics are 1116, 1175, 1205, and 1208. As always, your feedback will be greatly appreciated. Please share your thoughts. And uh, thank you. Have a great time at Insight and stay safe.